Aloha everyone, welcome back to Storky Farmstead. So my name is Samantha and I sat down with Paul from Maui Investigates today and did an interview for you folks. It's amazing. He confirmed for me different things that I knew were true, but I'd never heard anyone else speak about them. One was the mist coming down the mountain on August 7th. Two was this was really not a natural fire, but he's got proof that other people don't have folks. So I hope you enjoy this 30 minute video. Really listen to what he's saying to you. And um, he's gonna give you some amazing suggestions on what you can do in your community and what you can do to help Maui also. It's very important. He also wrote a book. I hope all of you will get this book. It's called Reclaim Paradise, but it's gonna tell you how to help reclaim your town your community. That's how we're going to do it, folks. One community at a time. We're going to take back control. Uh, I found everything he said to be very factual, very educational, and, and you know, just eye-opening. Uh, at the end of the video, he will also tell you where you can go watch his videos he's been doing and also how you can donate. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. Please like, comment, subscribe. Please share this video this is the information that needs to get out aloha and mahalo at the Starkey farmstead we have mr paul with us and and just want to say thank you for making time i know with the one year anniversary yesterday you were very busy getting the truth out to the entire world um so you say what you think the world needs to know like what what do you need first off can people donate to help you find the truth and where can they do that well, well, first off, I think that uh, to really take a look at what our investigation is and what we've been doing, and maybe I can give a little background as sure. to how this whole thing started and what our intention is with this. So um, shortly after the fire, many of us here in the community felt like, hey, something's not right. And so we started uh, getting testimonies and data, a lot of videos. This is a very interesting situation when we have a catastrophe with so many people with their phones that were able to take videos. We have thousands of videos. Yes. And out of that, we were able then to start putting together different categories of data and information. So if you've gone to our website, media is repeating that story time and time again. So what we have is the formation from this repetition of belief systems a belief systems that they're trying to put in their story that this was a single source urban interface fire that was driven by high winds and these high winds were created by a pressure drop from Hurricane Dora some 600 miles away and also then if you look across in terms of this other high pressure system they're saying that that was 1,400 miles away. They're saying that that is what created this intense wind. And a wind, for example, <laughs> that was just concentrated in Lahaina. You go to the rest of the island I was that day. That. Did y'all feel the wind here, the, the supposed wind? Was it here? No. So what happened was on the 7th, we had this white haze come in that blanket of white haze. So we're gonna, we're putting out a, a, this week, we're putting out a video on the weather, which includes then our videos of that white haze coming and coating the island. And as it coated the island, people really noticed that there was something bizarre happening at this point in time. So uh, we have that type of, of data, especially when we look at the 8th, where the wind was calm. I was in Kula. They had a fire there the night before, and the smoke was just coming perfectly up straight. I came here to Kihei. It was stagnant and still. But yet, I couldn't believe from what my friend said, as soon as they went into past the tunnel into Uluwalu, the winds really picked up strongly. And there were a lot of wind siphons, cyclones going on in the water. An unprecedented amount. Wow. So, uh, so what they're saying, basically, 
especially when you look at the troposphere and the strange frequency and vibrations in the cloud formations. They're saying that this pressure drop, which was 1,400 miles apart, mm. created this isolated wind. That's their story. But see, all they have to do is repeat in media that it was a pressure gradient drop that created the wind. Hmm? Right. But let's look at the data and the facts. And when you let the data and the facts tell the story, instead of government cover-ups, then you really start to get to see what truly is happening. And this is what we need to do as community globally, really, at this point in time. Because these incidences are occurring, but when you start to look at the facts and the data and gather information and take time. Now, we've, we've been at this for a year, gathering this data. But out of that, we are clear, especially when you start looking at the bodies. Hmm? Yeah. It's, it's horrific. How many do you think passed? Well, we know of 104. So uh, they, they were saying two people were missing, so there was 102 confirmed, and then they were, they were saying that two people were missing. Um, uh, so uh, that's the official story on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we have four-year requests, Freedom of Information Act requests, to look at the uh, coroner reports to gather that data and stuff like that so far. <laughs> yeah. The police department has not been very cooperative at this point in time. So that, so that brings us to our legal approach. So we have 22 FOIA requests that we put out to eight different agencies. So we're monitoring that. And now, for example, if the police department doesn't come through with our requests, then what we'll do is we, we take them to court. Mm -hmm. And we call, we call writ of mandamus and we've already have that ready to go, but these, these are approaches. We also have uh, ready to go also a whole case for common law that uh, would require this to be a uh, community investigation that's open and transparent. Mm -hmm. See, but what happened was that when, uh, so, so anyway, these reports, are very important for us to look at the omissions that they have. And there are over 20 omissions that are very significant, like that white haze, for example. They don't even mention the wind cyclones. No. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I do want to tell you, um, there's a lady that I spoke to that lives above Kula. Mm -hmm. She had called me on the phone very concerned the night before the fires. A haze had come down the mountain. Two police officers show up on her property and she did not call them. They were up there. She said that she became very confused. She felt like uh, she was out of body experience. She could see it coming. She said, Samantha, it started above me in Haleakala on the crater and it began to slide like a thick milk almost. But you could see through it. She said it was um, metallic a little bit. She said the police officers, one of them knew her and touched her and said, I need you to go inside. I need you to go to bed. Don't come back out your house. She said she went inside and went to sleep and woke up like she had a hangover. I cannot remember her name. She will see this video. When she contacts me, I will have her contact you. There you go. It's the first time I ever heard about that haze. You're the second person to ever mention it well, to me. Well, you, you'll see on our video that we're about to produce, you'll see uh, physical proof as to what occurred. Uh, and, and that's what we're doing. We're gathering facts, data, and information, and let that tell a story instead of some cover-up or uh, conspiracy. Conspiracies, that's right. So this is not about anything like that. We're just, we're just objective and clear. So as we look at those 20 omissions from the government's reports, and we put those 20 omissions in a forensic analysis, we get a very, very different story. Hmm? So that's what we're doing. We're looking at what is the truth, what's truly happening here. And, and, and my hope is that what we're doing, basically we have a core group of, uh, of us, uh, that about 15 of us that work regularly, we meet weekly. And what it takes, I think, in terms of what we're facing right now uh, on communities on a global level is that people come together and take responsibility and say, you know what? 
we're going to get to the truth. And if our small group can help put out the truth of what truly what happened there, that will expose it to a lot more people. So our first approach is to get this data and information out to the public. Yep. So the court of public opinion is, is the first step. Uh, then, you know, we're going to continue our legal approaches. We have four legal approaches that we're developing. Um, and uh, also with that, uh, you know, like I said, we have a good team and we're looking for more people to come and participate, especially experts. Uh, we need uh, lawyers at this point in time. Uh, you know, and we have, uh, although we have a good foundational team, we need some additional support there. Uh, also, if there are forensic experts uh, that would like to take a look at our data and provide their insight as to what they see, as well as weapons experts, uh, high energy weapons experts, yep. uh, we need that type of data because we really don't know what we're, what's happening right now at this yep. point. We, we, we don't know and we're not projecting or speculating. Our job is to just gather the data, the facts, the videos, the testimonies, and then let the experts, uh, unbiased experts, tell the story. But what we have right now is that right, the government is, is claiming that everything's fine, <laughs> nothing to look for here, uh, and they move on. But I hope your audience and people who are connected with you can really start to see that we have to come together and spread this information out because what we're documenting here in Lahaina is reflective of what's happened in so many places around the world. Chile is like, oh, it was yes. like a carbon copy. Mm -hmm. of, of, and, and so many of these other areas that are, are being destroyed at this point in time. Unprecedented. So what is truly going on? You know, we can look at what's happening with the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, uh, the organization that our Attorney General hired is Underwriter Laboratories <laughs> and their subsidiary group. So if you're familiar with uh, anything to do with 9-11 and you yeah. look at the NIST report, this was the main engineering report that documented how the, those towers collapsed, all three of them, by the way, Building 7 included, and they came up with this theory called pancake theory. And the way they came up with that theory was to take Underwriter Laboratories data and they fabricated it. And we have a whistleblower, Kevin Ryan, who just said, whoa, wait a minute, this is what the data was, this is, you're fabricating this so you can come up with this crazy theory. Yeah. A theory that only applied to those three skyscrapers on that day. Never before, never after. That's right. This is the same organization that's doing this investigation <laughs> right now. So you figure it out. Yeah. Let's, let's use common sense with this. Huh? What does it take? Now, we'll be showing videos of the bodies, and if that's what they're doing to our communities, our population here, we have to wake up and realize that we are really uh, in, a, in a war. Yeah. A war not of our choosing, but a war that is been orchestrated, has been, if you go and go to our website and look at how some of the control of this governance system uh, got overtaken by the military industrial complex, then you start to, and, and you see the CIA's involvement in these type of things, then you see that there's a layer that's there, not conspiracy, no facts, data. Let's, I think the community needs to awaken to the reality of, of what, we're, what we're up against right now. So um, I was at the event yesterday in Lahaina and it was very moving. Um, 
especially when they showed all the people who recently passed from that fire. And out of all of that, though, what I get so much is a sense of community coming together and the spirit of aloha. Hmm? And if aloha was ever tested, it was here in Lahaina. And it was incredible the response our community had. Um, they put up these hubs in all different areas around Lahaina so that people would get immediate support. And there were people from the other islands coming over. I mean, Molokai that day after, you know, they were, they were coming in with their boats with supplies and water. Yeah. So this is, I think, our salvation, is community, and coming together as community. And that means community like we're doing here with this uh, Maui community investigation. Yes. It's the same type of thing that I would encourage all of you to do. Not just to sit and watch videos and say, wow, isn't that interesting? But to start to participate and get involved. There are ways you can do that. Um, what we did here in Maui was we first started, uh, I, I got involved here in 2017, and I started a, a political action committee called the Maui Pono Network. And probably you're, you're driving around, yeah. now you see all these banners that said Ohana candidates. Well, those are the candidates that we uh, identify and support. So we do a vigorous due diligence on candidates we look at candidates that support the people and the environment, not big money corporate interests. Oh, very And good. there's a very clear distinction. There are really two parties, and those are the two parties. Let's not, you know. Uh, yeah. So let's let's not delude ourselves around Republican and Democrat That's because exactly again, right. uh, they're still supporting that military industrial complex. So what we have, I think, is uh, on a local level is where we have an opportunity to create systemic change. And that's what we really need to do. We need to change this psychopathic system that we're yes. in. And the way to do that is by getting involved with local politics in a way that you identify the right representatives and you put them in. I'll give you an example. In uh, our first election that we got involved in was 2018. We got a majority of the county council that supports the people and environment for the first time in 125 years. Wow. We were one of the most corrupt counties in the United States. So we started changing laws that were wired so that decisions and money and resources were wired in a particular way to support big money interests. Yes, yes. <laughs> so what we did was we changed the charter. The charter is the wiring diagram of local governance. So, in four years, we passed 19 charter amendments. I mean, these are huge. Like, here in Maui, water is the lifeblood of this place. Yes, it is. And we had a Canadian pension fund controlling our water, <sighs> water distribution. So, we said, and, and, and these corporations were hoarding the water since the 1800s when they were doing the sugar plantation. So we said, no, no, you're not going to do that anymore. This is a, a public ask a, 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 for us. This is a public right that we have our own water and we control it. So we have now a water uh, commission that oversees our water and, uh, and our, our water system. Uh, same with, you know. I was going to ask you about Hana. Did you, I'm sure you have, they won the lawsuit to get 10 of their streams flowing back at 60% to the local farmers, the indigenous farmers on Hana. That lawsuit just went through. Yeah. I heard about about a week ago. Been fighting for years to get the rivers flowing again, the streams. So this is why we need good representation to change the corrupt system mm -hmm. that allows this manipulation to happen. And uh, again, what we saw here is um, really a process of how things can dramatically change. I, I don't know, because we made such progress in, in bringing the county back to the people and really concerned about the environment, 
I don't know if that's why we were attacked with mosquitoes starting in July, uh, releasing 40 billion mosquitoes a year that are that are engineered, that are lab, that are lab infected. That's a question for you. Why would why in the world would they want to bring a mosquito to a place? Because South Louisiana. You bring mosquitoes, we have mosquitoes, and they hurt. They make you bite. sick. They will make you sick. So why would they want to bring a bug that can make you sick here, an insect? That would be ridiculous to me. Well, isn't it ridiculous what happened in Lahaina? Oh, it is. Yeah. It's very... So, it, so, so we have to realize that they're saying that they, their excuse for that was that they're helping to save native birds. <laughs> Hey, listen, that, that's their rationale. But when, again, when you use common sense, when you look at what's truly happening, not what the government tells you is so, but just take a step back and then be proactive in making change. So we started to work with this one woman, Tina Leah, has been doing a great job in, in, in dealing with the mosquitoes. And uh, uh, shortly after that, when we go on tour to, to do a whole thing on the mosquitoes, August 8th happened. And that's when we realized that this was a much, much bigger attack. Yes. That uh, we had to put our resources and our focus toward. And, and that's what we did by making sure that we got the data and information before it was destroyed. Notice what they did in 9 11. That's right. How quickly they shipped all the steel out to China. Uh, and, and how, it, again, uh, there was a, a playbook they used for 9-11. And they're repeating it in a, in a similar way, especially when you look at using underwriter laboratories. Yes, yes. <laughs> to oversee the investigation. <laughs> That's like a fingerprint. You know what I'm saying? A clue. That's a fingerprint. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that, um, again, what I would encourage your view is to do is to um, know that they can create these local political action committees that are for towns, for cities, for counties. You want to go at that level because as, as soon as you start to go on a state and federal level or even global level, uh, you, you uh, have to deal with media, mainstream media. Yeah. And we don't have the resources at this point in time, but we have the resources. Like here in the county, we have local papers. That's right. We connect with. So I, uh, I wrote a book on this process, uh, and, it's, and it's called Reclaim Paradise. And this is what we did it from 2018, 20, every two years we have our elections. So uh, this is, documents the history of Maui and how it was overtaken in 1893 and how five major corporations rule the islands here. And basically people were subjugated yes. to, to more servant uh, approach. And so they had a taste of what this new world order is trying to put us into. They saw the suppression. They, in order to communicate, around union stuff, they had to go to the bathroom and then make messages on toilet paper and then put it under the stalls and hand it that way. That's how they had to communicate because it was illegal to even talk about stuff. Videos on vehicles, on the trees in the burn zone, on the circuitous path, but these were taken from testimonies, also looking at the government reports. And this is an important piece because what we did for the first, I guess, eight months really, was to gather data and information and start to get uh, testimonies and uh, uh, interviews with experts. Uh, we interviewed six fire captains and fire chiefs and they all said the same thing. This is not a natural fire. So, so there is a thing with uh, our water system also. Uh, certainly we were able to make some progress, great progress by passing this charter amendment. But there are still issues that we have in West Maui that I think certainly reflected some of the fire response that yeah. occurred because 
in some areas there wasn't water water pressure. You know, there's a lot of factors that can go into that. There could be broken water mains, there could be other things that could have affected that flow of water. Um, we have five water tanks that store water then uh, up on uh, higher elevation along Lahaina. Uh, and uh, so, and then we have uh, other ish, other ways of dealing with water and getting water. So, it, it, again, was there a system? Usually, uh, the counties require that the fire departments test the fire hydrants on a regular basis. And so, uh, we're still trying with our FOIA request to try to get the information on See. when those uh, fire hydrants were tested and how many were defective and how many were, were on. So these are, again, we're, we're still digging. It's, it's been a year, but we're, we're a small group of volunteers. Uh, we have very limited resources at this time. Uh, like, you know, we're uh, relying on people who have any type of technical aspect to help us pro bono. So it, um, so it goes slow that way. Uh, you know, if we had resources and support, I'm amazed, for example, you know how much uh, uh, underwriter laboratories got for their reports? Uh, let me guess, I think, it was it $5 million? I remember reading this. It was $2 million. $2 million. But there were other organizations that received a tremendous amount of money to do investigations. But do you think they want to investigate this and get this type of data out? No. We haven't gotten support, let's say, from uh, now, <laughs> any <and> government groups. <laughs> your soil test, your water tank, you guys are paying for that out of pocket. That's right. We did We did yeah. uh, a bunch of uh, soil tests. We have a lot more tests to do. Very, they're very interesting tests, too, because, for example, when you look at the trees that were burnt from the inside out, all the way deep down into the root system, if you go to our website and look at our tree video, you'll know what I mean. Yes. I went down, I was able to dig a foot and a half where the root system, solid tap roots were, all ash. And then out of that, we got these clay that was solidified. Uh, and it's called fregulites. Uh -huh. uh, and, and you have to have a lot of energy in order to uh, kind of melt the sand and the rock and everything together and fuse it together. Uh, to, to a rock, so 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 we need you know some funds so that we can do analysis of that and other things along that line because we do have uh, a lot of things that we've collected, made sure that you know we went and looked at all the key things that would be of suspicion for, forensically, yeah. uh, and uh, so we have we have uh, like over 50 categories that we've been looking at. At different points in time but right now our videos are focused on 20 omissions and rebuttals i remember that do you have a venmo a cash app a paypal or any kind of gofundme any way that if they wanted to donate a dollar a piece there's 51,000 of them if they all wanted to donate a dollar to you where would they go it would go to our no i mean like how would they do it how would they donate yeah so so they can go to our website okay and we have a donation tab there and that goes on to PayPal. PayPal, perfect. And there are some people who don't like to do electronic type of stuff. Right. So, so we ask people if they if they like. And I just like received another check today, uh, that uh, so people are sending it by mail also Wonderful. to help us to support us in our process and what we're doing. So, um, I I just want to uh, as we conclude. Uh, unless you have any sp other specific questions That's, at this point in time. It's whatever you felt they needed to hear. You know, um, I, I just want to encourage you to get involved, to participate. Yeah. Um, this is not the time to be a sideliner. This is a time to get involved. You can get involved. Again, just uh, if you want to look at the process, again, you can go to this, get this book at Amazon. And what it does it supports then these political action committees so that you can change your local system that's how we get systemic change yes by going on a local town city and county level by changing the legislature so here we have nine county council members we want to make sure that we have at least five that represent the people and environment and that way 
you know, you we, know that, we, we know that we're going to be moving in a positive direction as, right. as a county because that is the main mechanism in terms of rewiring the system. I was on the Charter Commission also, which happens every 10 years. They select 11 citizens here in the county. And so I really had a chance to do a deep dive in, into our uh, charter. And again, it is the key for systemic change. It really is. And the other thing is uh, spread the word, of the, if you can, of yeah. what we're doing here with the Maui Community Investigation because it does have a lot of significant um, analogies to what's occurring all over the place right now. Uh, I think that I see this thing repeated time and time again, even the way they're structuring donations and how they have certain organizations that come in to claim they're community organizations that take the money and yet it doesn't go to the community. I told so, you guys that. <laughs> so, so this is what we're, we experienced here. Yeah. Uh, there are other places also that are going through similar experience. So let's share the data and information so that we can become more consciously aware of what we're facing as a community, as, as, a, as a, really a global community. A global community, yes, sir. And, and uh, I would uh, also uh, look at this from not only this nitty-gritty perspective, but to me, we're at a spiritual war. And what I mean by that is that we're dealing with a psychopathic system right now. That vibrates at a very low level, of low frequency of anger, fear, hate, divisiveness. What we're looking at doing is moving to a higher frequency. Amen. And that higher frequency is about aloha. That's right. And love and community connectedness. And if we can let that be the main force that's motivating us and driving us forward, Hallelujah. I've been working now with these uh, groups in Canada who formed after the convoy, the trucker strike. And they formed community and they saw how powerful that is to help change the local system. So again, I, I really want to support you in, in not being immersed in the digital realm. That's right. But be more immersed in the personal realm. Yes. Be more immersed in community and working collaboratively together for systemic change. We have to do this as a community. And as we come together like that, that's very spiritual. Yes, it is. Because it's opening, it's embracing. You work with other people. You can't help but have your heart open if you're coming from that place. So, again, I, I think that, uh, if anything, uh, this could be a catalyst for a spiritual awakening. Uh, and uh, I hope you all participate on some level as best you can. So either spread the word of what we're doing. If you can donate, that'd be wonderful. But get involved with your local community and, and, and civic action. I think it's extremely important at this time. Uh, so thank you so much. And Aloha, mahalo. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Right. It's amazing. There you go. I'm all about the cash is king. <laughs> I'm right, and then I'm going to make a donation, which they call Tower Busters. So you've got gold and copper and metal, and it disrupts any form of frequencies that come from 5G towers and all of that. They're very good to put around your Wi-Fi towers and things in your home. They'll stabilize. 